Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration of the Eucharist, we have come here to adore our Lord Jesus born in the manger, and in him we have seen God's greatness, greatness always in love. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for his pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the nativity of your only begotten Son wondrously began for your people the work of redemption, Grant, we pray, to your servants such firmness of faith that by his guidance they may attain the glorious prize you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Unlike Cain, who belonged to the evil one and slaughtered his brother, why did he slaughter him? Because his own works were evil and those of his brother righteous. Do not be amazed, then, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. The way we came to know love was that he laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If someone was worldly means, sees a brother in need and abuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? Children, let us love, love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The Lord is good. The Lord whose kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Please stand. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. Today, a great light has come upon the earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip. 
And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the town of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the sky open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today remind us of God's greatness, ang kadakilaan ng Diyos. In the Gospel reading today, we see Jesus promising Nathaniel that you will see greater things than this. That God is always greater than what we can ever see or what we can ever imagine or expect. And in our first reading today, from the first letter of St. John, the letter tells us that God is always greater than our hearts. The readings today remind us that God is always greater. His greatness is always reminded of us in the readings today. But what does God mean when He says that He is great, that He is always greater? Madalas po mga kapatid, kapag ginagamit natin ang salita na greater than, we always think that one is always more than another. Kaya kapag iniisip natin ang kadakilaan, iniisip natin ang mas makapangyarihan, mas mayaman, mas maraming pera, you are always greater than. That is why for many of us, when we use the term great, we always think of power and authority. But God's greatness is not measured in those things. We are reminded today, especially in our first reading, that God's greatness is seen in His love. Dakila ang Diyos dahil sa Kanyang dakilang pagmamahal sa atin. And He always chose the greater thing, and that is the greater love for us. Pinili niya palagi ang mas mga dakilang bagay at yan ay ang 
mahalin tayo. Kahit sa gitna ng ating pagiging makasalanan. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are reminded to choose always the greater thing, and that is to love. Siguro po mga kapatid, may roong mga pagkakataon sa buhay natin na parang ang hirap ng magmahal. Pero ang mas dakilang bagay ay ang piliin pa rin ang magmahal. The other day, one couple came here to ask me to bless them for their 25th wedding anniversary. And I asked them, Kamusta ang 25 years ninyo? Madali ba o hindi? Ang bilis ng sagot ng mag-asawa, sabi agad, hindi. 25 years of marriage, 25 years of loving, it is not easy. You need patience, you need forgiveness, you need understanding. But you see, my dear brothers and sisters, that is where you will see greatness. If you are able to forgive one another, even if you are hurt, if you are able to be patient with one another, if you are able to understand one another, that is where Greatness lies. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, we are reminded of God's greatness. God's greatness not composed of power and authority, but God's greatness always seen in love. Amen. Please stand. We have heard the word of God proclaimed to us. He sees our sincere efforts to lead good lives. And once again, we ask him for his help. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the Church of God may fearlessly call people to repentance and believe in the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That more people may profess their faith in God in all circumstances of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that families may strive to make their homes places where children can hear God calling them by name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. That we may hold on to the eternal truth of the good news of Christ and the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the dead may find peace and happiness in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your people. Do not look on our sinful ways, but show us your gentle mercy. We ask this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who, through your Son, receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Benedict XVI, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite again everyone this afternoon during our lunchtime Mass, the replica of the image of the Nazareno of Quiapo will be coming here to the Manila Cathedral in preparation for the great feast day this January 9. The welcome Mass will be presided by the parochial vicar of Quiapo Church, Father Hans Magdurulang. And the image will stay until tomorrow. The farewell Mass will be tomorrow during our lunchtime Mass also to be presided by our administrator, Father Bong Bayaras. And also tomorrow, we will be celebrating a memorial Mass or Requiem Mass for our Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, and it will be at 5 p.m. to be celebrated by our Archbishop Jose Cardinal Advincula together with the Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Charles Brown. Everyone is invited to join us in this thanksgiving for the life of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.